An absolute disastrous week. News flow for silver and gold. We're going to dive into all of it because do we have a reason to be hopeful? But this week has provided us with news flow that was the worst of the worst that we could have hoped for. Between the Fed, between the job numbers, if we talked about this, and we did last week, guys, we would be expecting significantly lower precious metals prices. Is there reason for hope? Is there a silver lining in this cloud that has suddenly come over the precious metals market. I think there is, and I think we need to talk about some of these numbers. Let's start with the job numbers. The big news story this morning. I told you yesterday, today's job number would be the absolute biggest news event of the year so far for gold and silver. I think I even said in the biggest in the history of the universe, but definitely <laughs> the biggest news story of the year. And that absolutely was a turd ball hitting the silver price and gold price, hitting the story behind why we want more unbelievable jobs numbers. If you told us a week ago, if we'd had a sneak peek at those numbers, I mean, we would I, I wouldn't have believed it. I still don't believe it. And should we believe it right now? Let's dig into these numbers. 350,000 jobs were created, almost double of what were expected. <laughs> really? Okay. Well, let's dig in a little bit because according to Zero Hedge, there were 63,000 full-time jobs that were lost, but there was a net gain of 96,000 part-time jobs. And I've got a list. I'm going to run through it at warp speed, an updated list of some of the layoffs that we've heard that are going on. People are like, what is going on? Zero Hedge also had it. This is hilarious. <laughs> they said this before the numbers came out. They said, if anyone, and they're talking to you and me, expected economic data in this election year to be either number one, accurate, or number two, make any sense whatsoever, you will be severely disappointed. And it's crazy, guys. That's all we can say. All we can do is laugh at these numbers that they're point, point, putting out there. Because the real data, the real word on the street is that things are much different. But the government is telling us everything's dandy, right? The Bureau of Labor and Statistics. <laughs> uh, thank you for being here. Please don't forget, give this a thumbs up. That helps get the word out to more people and don't forget to subscribe. You'll get new content every single day and it'll always have to do with the precious metals, with discovering the real story about what's really going on out there, right? Putting the pieces together and we can have some fun together and you've got new friends. I'm telling you, we've got a lot of great friendships that have been forged through this community. I've made a lot of great friends. Trust me, if you come here and you uh, contribute and you leave uh, comments in the comment section, you can meet some really cool people. Now, that being said, uh, the jobs number just absolutely crazy. Okay. I asked my daughters, I have twin 11 year old daughters. Okay. And they got to school today and I texted them. I said, were there any government officials at your school, at your middle school last week? And my one daughter texted me back. She said, yeah, there was this guy in a suit and he asked me if I do any chores around the house. And I told him that I feed the cats. And he said, well, do you get paid for doing that? And she said, yeah, I get $5 a week. And he said, okay, thank you. And he checked the box and walked away. I'm telling you, I think the government is now counting the chores that my kids do as a part-time job. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, absolutely crazy, these numbers. Uh, what about silver and gold? Let's, let's kind of shift into that. And then we're going we're gonna to destroy the Fed, okay? <laughs> One of our favorite things to do. Uh, before we do that, silver and gold, let's say thank you to our channel sponsor, Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X. If you want to get your hands on some silver, gold, or platinum, and you want to buy it online, do yourself a favor. Do what I did before they sponsored the channel. Check out Pimbex. Trustworthy, great selection, great prices. Enough said. And if you ever want to think about converting an IRA, they can help you with that as well. 
you'll get the same metal from Pimbex that you can get from most of the other big online bullion dealers, the exact same thing, but you can get it at a lower price. More metal for your money. All right. What about the silver price and gold price? Why Why are you optimistic? I, I'm telling you what, I've cried about once every six months I cry when I'm on here. I'm not crying today, okay? I'm actually optimistic about what's going on, and I'll tell you why. Guys, if they told, if we, if, if we knew, if we knew a week ago today, last Friday when we were talking here in the basement, if we knew how horrible the news would be for the precious metals prices, right? The Fed being more hawkish, this unbelievable, we would have thought, and I said it, we talked about this, right? That we could see gold at 1970, 1980, 1960. It wouldn't have surprised me to see silver fighting to hold on to $20. But despite, I want you to think about this, despite what has been probably the worst news week for precious metals in decades, right? You know, we just start to get some momentum, right? It's been a hard start to the year. We are still, let's take a look. Let's just take a quick look because last I checked, we still had gold above $2,000. Gold only down $18, $2,035 an ounce. If this holds, I'm telling you, I believe this is a very good positive sign for the metals. I know silver's getting hit a little more down 50 down 57 cents. 22 dollars and 60 cents. But a week ago, like I said, we would have thought that we would have prices that are So, let me ask you a question. Are you are, are you feeling what I'm feeling that despite right? These eggs they've thrown at the silver and gold market that we still have room for hope. And I'm actually optimistic right now. I mean, I mean, I mean, you can kind of look at it that way. Like when you're beat down so bad, like we were this week and showing what I would say, rock solid strength that I think that shows we have really are putting in a base in these metals, a base, like a solid foundation, like a layer of concrete from which the price can build and build and build. It's going to go up and down, no doubt about it. But it, does it feel like we've built a base? I'll ask that question. I think we're, we've built a base. I'm optimistic. Look, we don't know anything for sure. But if you think we got a base, type B-A-S-E. If you would do it in all capitals, that's great. But I, I just think we're in a base. Now, let's run through very quickly. You ready for this? I'm going to do it in warp speed. Okay, these are the companies, despite the fact that the economy added 350,000 uh, Big Mac delivery men, there's some big companies that have had big layoffs. Here we go. You ready for this? This is the percentage of the workforce these companies have laid off. Hasbro, 20%. Twitch, 35%. Spotify, 17%. Levi's, 15%. Xerox, 15%. Qualtrics, 14%. Wayfair, 13%. Duolingo, 10%. Washington Post, 10%. eBay, 9%. Business Insider, 8%. PayPal, 7%. Charles Schwab, 6%. UPS, what'd they lay off? 7,500 people, either that or 12,000. Anyway, 2%. And these are the white collar managers. BlackRock, 3%. Citigroup, they laid off 20,000 people plus. <laughs> and Pixar, that's the animated movie company, 1,300. But, but the jobs market is great. Bidenomics is working. Yeah, whatever. I, I look, th think about this. Silver and gold have been around for a few more thousands of years than the Fed or the U.S. government. They are calling a bluff. They got a little, a little wisdom over those thousands of years, and I think it's showing right now in what I believe to be a strong foundation being built for the precious metals. What about the Fed? I mean, that was on Wednesday, right? The Fed's hawkish. I did a deep dive. Do you really think 
that the Fed is going to be hawkish going. Let me just read you some of these notes I put out. The, the, Fed, the Fed will likely do some type of QE while at the same time leaving rates where they are. And gold knows this, okay? This idea that even if the Fed leaves rates the way they are, they can do backdoor QE. They did it less than a year ago when we had this banking crisis here in the United States. They did the BTFP program, okay? The bank term funding program, that was QE. That was a rescue, a bailout program. Hold on one second, I need to get a drink of coffee. They could do something like stopping the quantitative tightening that they're doing right now, rolling off their balance sheet, all right? Or, or again, another special program like the BTFP. It's kind of like a fireman. Think about this. This is It's like a fireman who shows up at a fire and he has a fire extinguisher in one hand and a fan in the other, right? He needs that fire to have a job so he's got his fire extinguisher here and his fan in the other hand, okay? It can be a little difficult to understand, but you, the core of this is that the Fed needs inflation. Don't believe Jerome Powell had the gall during his press conference to say, we're acutely aware of, the, um, of, the, of how difficult inflation has been on the American family, American household. He doesn't give two hoots, right? The Fed is there to serve the needs of the ultra wealthy, the power elite. That's a fact. Okay, that's an absolute fact. They need inflation. Fiat money systems only survive in an inflationary environment. They need the inflation. At the end of the day, right, and this is likely, again, another factor why silver and gold are behaving the way they are, they're 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 <laughs> they're doing great. I'm sorry. I don't. I I know it's a crappy day. Down fifty cents, sixty cents for silver. Right now, gold down twenty five. Whatever it is, they're still behaving. In my opinion, very strong, and it's a very optimistic sign because they're sniffing out the reality of the situation. Right? It's like when you go to buy a car. Have you ever gone to buy a car? And you have a car you want to trade in and you go to the car dealer, right? And you see the car you want to buy, right? When you go to buy that car and trade in your existing car, right? They may give you a great deal on your trade in. We're going to offer you 4,000 more than the Kelly Blue Book. But if they do that, they're going to rip you off on the new car price. They're not going to negotiate that. Or the opposite could occur. You go in to buy this new car. And I mean, I hate to have to... <coughs> compare the Federal Reserve to a car dealership, but I think that's a pretty uh, uh, appropriate comparison. You go in to buy the car and they give you nothing for your trade-in, but they, they'll give you a big discount on the new car. It's six or one half dozen the other, right? <coughs> Either you're going to be able to brag to your neighbors, oh, I got a great deal on this car, new car I bought, or you can brag to your neighbor, that, oh, they gave me $4,000 more on my trade and it was awesome. It was a great deal. No, they got you either way. <clears throat> and that's exactly what we're dealing with when it comes to the Fed, okay? The Fed needs inflation. The Fed needs to uh, devalue the dollar if there's any hope whatsoever that this $34 trillion in debt is ever going to be managed or manageable. I got some interesting, crazy news about gold demand. I mean, really crazy news. And it comes from Bloomberg. We're going to get to that in just one second. Let's go to page two here, guys. Okay. So the Fed will be faced, okay, even though the economy is great right now, we've created all these jobs, the Fed will absolutely be faced with a very tough decision at some point in the future because of mathematics right? The laws of mathematics, they show no forgiveness on the altar of truth. And I missed a super chat. Darn it. Oh, thank you, William B. Thank you guys for the super chat, especially on a day like today when I'm under the weather. It really lifts my spirits. <coughs> Let me have a drink of coffee. And then I want to talk to you about the Fed and their predicament. And then we're going to talk about this unbelievable info. And then we're going to talk about is China destroying the United States. We have some pretty good hard data that indicates that's the case. 
the Fed is going to be faced with a big predicament. Do we fight inflation or do we or do we fight a recession? Okay. Undoubtedly, their decision will be to fight the recession because if they would try to fight inflation, really fight inflation, really fight inflation, okay? That would destroy the economy. That would make the value of the dollar go up, up, up. And there's absolutely no way that the national debt could be managed at that point. So absolutely, when the Fed is at that path, what they'll do <coughs> is they will do what they need to do to fight the recession. That'll stimulate the economy. That'll make the dollar go down in value. And that will make managing the 34, which by that time might be 36 or 40 or 50 trillion in debt, more manageable. We are past the point of no return. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong, but the smart people and, and also even you know, you're smart. I'm smart too. We can work a calculator. We're past that point where it can be recovered. It's, it's mathematics. So when they get to that point and they make that decision to fight the recession, rates will come down, right? Maybe not even in nominal terms, but if that makes sense, um, uh, rates, rates will come down and that will make the value of silver and gold go up because the value of the dollar will go down, rates will go down, all that good stuff. <coughs> now, this is unbelievable about gold. And this comes from Bloomberg, okay? I also want to say thank you to channel sponsor Fortuna Silver Mines. They actually mine more gold now than they do silver, and they're doing it all over the world, and they're doing it very effectively. They have a new mine in the Ivory Coast, which is just performing above and beyond expectations. If you're interested in learning about a top quality, do your own due diligence. I'm not giving financial advice. It's a stock I do own. Okay, I can tell you that. But if you want to learn about a quality silver and gold mining company, check out Fortuna, fortunasilver.com. All right, let's dig into this gold information. From Bloomberg, <coughs> gold demand to hit a record with central bank buying. This is from the World Gold Council. The central bank, this is not another central banks are buying gold segment. This is a different segment which just absolutely blew me away. They say total gold demand hit a record last year and is expected to expand again in 2024 as the United States Federal Reserve moves toward cutting interest rates. Well, we'll see about that. Potentially aiding prices according to the World Gold Council. But there's this new source of demand for gold. <clears throat> which is uh, OTC activity, annual demand growth in the OTC market for gold. Demand growth hit 753% last year. That's up seven times. So I'm like, what is OTC? I've never really heard of that, to be honest with you, with gold. And this is what it is. OTC act activity are participants in the market including sovereign funds. So a lot of big countries, especially in the Middle East, have sovereign wealth funds. Sovereign funds, high net worth individuals, and hedge funds and family offices. They invest in gold bars. They Their investments, okay, so sovereign wealth funds, high net worth individuals, hedge funds, their investments in gold last year were up 750%. That's seven times. That's crazy, okay? Annual demand growth in the OTC market hit 753% last year, the most since 2011. Uh, investors are expected to continue accumulating gold at an accelerated pace this year, largely driven by the Federal Reserve uh, and their expected pivot. The expected OTC spree, as well as central bank buying, will provide a key counterweight to softness elsewhere, especially exchange-traded funds, right? Because people in the West and the ETFs are selling gold and silver. At least they have been, right? And that's like 
an area that could have huge improvement as well. But this, think about it. The average investors are selling gold, selling silver for that matter. High net worth individuals, hedge funds, and sovereign wealth funds bought seven times as much last year. Let that sink in. Let's get to 100 thumbs up here, guys, so I can ring the bell, okay? To me, that's a strong case. Um, and this is a, a, a prediction from a guy named Cavatoni. Cavatoni, who's with, I don't know who he's with, TD Ameritrade or somewhere like that. He's saying we could get to $2,200 gold. Can we get to 100 thumbs up? That would be great. We'll hit that. One bright spot also may, oh, here we go. <laughs> <clears throat> One bright spot may be India, the second biggest consumer with demand from the Asian nation expected to rebound next year. The rebound is supported by increased, this is, this is, this is super interesting about India, increased incomes as the economy grows, said P.R. Samua Swamardam, regional chief executive officer at the council in India. Sales were steady in the past few years, despite a massive jump in prices. Because in India, the value of the rupee has been going down. In China, demand for gold jewelry is likely to remain stable. India, when it comes to metals, is a big, big story. I read the other day that India is now actually officially the largest country in the world. Excuse me, over 1.4 billion People in India, what's staggering about India is how crazy they are about silver and gold. I mean, really crazy about gold. They have Indian households, not their government, households, people like you and me. They have 25,000 metric tons of gold stored in their mattresses, their rafters. I don't know where they keep it, but I'm sure they hide it really well. That's three times the amount of gold that the United States, the wealthiest country in the world, three times the amount of gold that we supposedly have in Fort Knox. The last time anybody saw the gold in Fort Knox was when Steve Mnuchin was there and he tweeted a thing, said, the gold's here. That's our audit that we have of our gold. Why don't they let us see the gold if it's ours? That doesn't make sense, does it? We'll leave that for a different show. Nonetheless, India's crazy about gold. Remember in 2022, India imported 330 million ounces of silver, more than like 36% of the world's total gold, I'm sorry, silver production that year. But there's even something <clears throat> more staggering about India. And the statistic is this, <clears throat> that 25% of the population of India will reach adult age within the next 10 years. Demographically, the way their, their country is reproduced, I guess you would say, they've got a massive wave of people that are going to be reaching adulthood in the next 10 years. They have a massive expansion of their middle class, consumer class, people that can buy precious metals. And in India, it is interwoven into their culture. Ask any person you know who's from India. I run into them all the time. They probably get tired of me asking about what gold and how gold and silver are integrated within to their, they all will tell you, absolutely. Ask anybody from Africa. My neighbor Ozzy across the street from Eritrea, he'll tell you, gold, that's what people, I mean, the rest of the world is different than us. Okay, the re and we're going to talk about is China. We're not even talking about China and gold and silver because they're crazy about it as well. That's a whole different story. We're just talking about the other country, India, with 1.4 billion people. All those people, what's 25% of 1.4 billion? That's uh, 250 million plus, that's like 350 million people. Right? Yeah, 25% of 1.4 billion. I think I did that in my head. Pretty impressive, huh? My accounting degree is paying off. Nonetheless, 350 million, that's the entire population of the United States. 350 million people are going to be becoming adult age, right? Like 18 plus in the next 10 years. 
and they're all going to be going into the consumer middle class, which is expanding like crazy in India. Because if you know anybody from India, like I know people from India, they're all very smart, hardworking people, and they all love silver and gold. It'll be interesting. That'll be absolutely for sure. Um, thank you again for being here. Please give this a thumbs up. Guys, that really helps get the word out. That's all we ask, a thumbs up. Super chats are super appreciated. They go a long way. Super thanks, super chats. You know, I never want you to give any money that you can't afford, okay? All the content here is free, will always be free. Nothing against anybody that does subscriptions or Patreon or whatever. There's no exclusive special. All of it's free because I, that's just me. That's the way I, I like to run the channel. I want everybody to be able to come here and participate. Please, you could do us a favor and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you are subscribed, make sure you've got the bell thing hit. That way you get notified every time we put out a new piece of content. Uh, let's just touch on, uh, we're going to talk about China and why China. Thank you for that super, wow, Todd, man, I appreciate every one of them. That's super generous. Thank you, Todd. Uh, thank you. Thank you. We're, we're going to talk about is China, do we have proof that China is destroying the USA? I've got, I think I've got some proof. Okay. And I don't know about you, but have you noticed in like the last 10 years that products you get from China, I just had to be honest, it's been like much better quality. It's crazy what you could get from China. I got a little remote controlled helicopter. It's the Ron's Basement uh, corporate helicopter over here. I tried to fly it and land it one time, but all the papers went flying everywhere. I mean, just the quality of products from China has gone up. We're going to touch on that, but let's talk about Canada. We've got a lot of viewers who join us from north of the border, uh, Canada. I joke around and call it Canada sometimes. Uh, hold on here. We've got trouble in Canada, and it says here from Reuters, Canada braces for a possible wave of business bankruptcy. So basically, I guess Canada gave all the small businesses a loan during the pandemic that occurred, and now they're requiring that these companies pay it back. In a lot of these companies, I mean, like tens of thousands, maybe they said, well, here, I'm not going to read this word for word. Uh, there were about 1.2 1, 1 small businesses with employees in Canada in 2021, uh, and, and most of them took these loans. There are tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of businesses that remain viable but will not be able to outrun their debt. So they've got all this debt they took out from the government during the pandemic. Now the government wants their money back. I mean, what, what is wrong with the world anymore? I just have a question, right? Like anytime I've borrowed money, I mean, are you this way? Like if you borrowed money from a bank to buy a house maybe, or you put something on a credit card that you feel like, there's this obligation that you're going to pay it back. Like, you know that you're going to be able to pay it back. So that's why you take, what's the deal with people now? It just seems like they feel like they can borrow money and kind of just forget about the fact that they need to pay it back. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what? I, I hate that anyway, but it, it so Canada, Canada, our northern border, whose economy is very much integrated and tied in with the United States, could be seeing some massive, massive um, problems when it comes to uh, the, the bankruptcies and this debt. Is China? Is China, right? We're all, are you afraid of China? I mean, if, you, if you've absorbed even 1% of the mainstream media over the last two or three years, you're very scared of China, right? We know China's taking over the world and blah, blah, you know, the China's, they're going to take over Taiwan and China's bad, right? They're bad. Russia, bad. China, bad. Who else is bad? Everybody's bad, seems like. Anyway, are they? There's two things going. Two of our biggest companies, right? Remember the Magnificent Seven, right? You know, Microsoft, Amazon, I think Tesla's in there, Apple's in there. Do we have definitive proof 
that China is kicking our rear. Let's talk about Tesla first, right? The electric vehicles, the electric green revolution. This is stunning. This is, And this is not getting reported on the mainstream media. Earlier this month, Chinese electric vehicle manufacturer BYD, which has been aggressively expanding its operations internationally, revealed it sold a record 525,000 electric vehicles in the fourth quarter of last year. So they sold 525. Meanwhile, Tesla delivered just 485,000 over the same time period. Now, this was based upon comments from uh, Ken Griffin, who's one of the richest people in the world. I think he's worth $37 billion. He owns that company Citadel in Chicago. Um, he had he had some some comments on this. He noted that China has used its size and relatively low labor costs to dominate many key industries in recent years, including solar panels. We know they use a lot of silver. Electric vehicles. We know they use a lot of silver and consumer electronics, making them a serious economic competitor to the U.S. He said, quote, we often lose sight of the fact that the Chinese economy represents 1.4 billion people. So they have a huge advantage when it comes to simple economies of scale. Combined with a strong education system that produces four times as many science, what is STEM graduates? What's STEM stand for? Science, technology, engineering, and math? He said, so we've got China who is in the electric vehicle. We don't hear about this because they ban them. I believe they're banned from being sold in the United States. But I, I read something a few months back, like China is making these electric cars that are really great, high quality vehicles. <coughs> and they're able to sell them for like, I think like 20 or 18 or 15,000 US dollars. And in Europe and in the United States, you have the automaker saying, don't let China, don't let China sell those cars here. Don't let China destroy the U.S. auto industry. So we're not going to see them. But the reality is they're producing cars and, and Tesla is going to try to compete with them in China. It's not going to happen, right? China is, um, and look, I don't like it. I'm an American. I want our economy. We're competing. But the reality is they're kicking our booty in a lot of areas. Where else? Where else? Just breaking news. <coughs> Do we get an indication that China is gaining on us and, and possibly, remember Huawei? Remember that company, Huawei? It was a big story like three years ago. Huawei spying on us. The Chinese are spying on us, and they uh, they uh, 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 banned Huawei products from the United States. I'd actually owned, I guess I was spied on. I owned a Huawei phone at one point. It was wonderful. But then there was this big controversy. They arrested the daughter of the, uh, or the CFO, who was the daughter of the founder in Canada. It was a big mess, and they banned Huawei products from the United States. I got news for you guys, okay? Possibly possibly part of that ban because of the spying that was going on really was a ban because the Huawei products were way better than anything that Samsung or Apple were producing. <coughs> Hold on one second. And but you can't lie about these numbers, okay? Because we heard from Apple, I believe just yesterday, they're, they're dealing with both a, in, a, in China, they're having problems in China, and they're going to blame it on the sluggish Chinese economy, but they're also uh, recognizing that Huawei is resurging within the country. People are buying Huawei phones instead of buying Apple phones in China. That's the real story, because the Huawei phones are better performing and a lower price, right? There's this thing called the Apple tax that in America, a lot, and maybe you're an Apple person. I'm not anti-Apple. I'm just giving you my opinion, but it's known as the Apple tax, meaning people believe that Apple is a better product when if you just look at the stats, right, they're really not, but they are neat. My kids got Apple phones for career. I'm not anti-Apple, but the reality is 
you pay an extra amount to get that little apple on the back of your phone. And they call that the Apple tax. And the Chinese are realizing they don't want to pay the Apple tax. They don't want to pay the Tesla tax because they can get better products at a much lower price that are manufactured domestically in their country. And what's the West doing? We don't let them sell Huawei phones in the United States. We don't let them sell BYD cars in the United States, right? Because we don't want to, our industry, unfortunately, can't compete. Now, there's a whole other argument about China and that is the government subsidizing. I understand. But, but you got a huge country over there with a lot of people in an expanding economy that's producing better products. So we better pay attention to what's going on over there in China. Let's take a quick update here. Hey, don't forget, guys, please, let's get some more thumbs up. It'd be greatly appreciated. I appreciate you joining me right now. Um, let's do a gold price update. Who knows? Down 30, down $21. It is a, it is a good thing, right? I mean, I never would have thought that I would be sitting here saying, Gold being down $21 is a good thing. Let's check silver. Hi-ho, silver! 58 cents, okay? Yeah, down 2.5%. Does that stink? Yeah, that stinks. But how do, I'm trying to trying to paint this picture for you. You know, it's it, 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 it would be like if, if a kid who's in high school um, had a, a sophomore year of high school had a horrible semester where they were, you know, out of out of their their grandpa died and they had to leave and they were, you know, real close to their grandpa and um, and then also during that same semester they were out for like three weeks because they had C nineteen or something like that so they missed all this school found out that their parents were getting divorced like it was like a horrible time for this kid who was in high school who had been getting A's and B's but they still got straight B's. And that's what I would say. I mean, like, I'm not happy about the gold and silver price right now, but given the poop storm that's been thrown at it this week, we can be happy that it's holding where it is, you know? I mean, uh, and when we look at these underlying fundamental factors for the metals, with silver, just the supply and demand component, and with gold, we can look at what's going on with these, what are they called again? The OTC market up 700%. Remember, these are hedge funds. They invest money for wealthy people. Sovereign wealth funds. Those are the wealth funds of wealthy countries that invest money for the country. Uh, who else was on there? Uh, high net worth individuals, right? These people are buying gold. We already know the whole central bank thing. And all of this, when we're pricing it in dollars, are you kidding me? The U.S. dollar, right? What backs that? What fundamental uh, uh, reasons do we have to believe that the dollar in real terms will go up in value? Because we can work a calculator, right? It's as simple as that. It's, you know, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it does not work. It's going to be an interesting ride through the end of the year. Thank you. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm I'm not been not been feeling great the last few days, uh, but I wanted to get on here. I promised you. I put out a piece of content every day. I appreciate your being here. It's a big deal when you decide to come to the basement. It uh, you know, <laughs> it makes our community what it is. And I know, especially on days like today, I know. You know, I I think like six months ago, I've cried twice during live streams. Once was over how much money I was losing on precious metal mining stocks, which will happen again today. Uh, but second was I looked at a picture of my dad, right? I mean, I know today is a tough day to be invested in the metals, but the fundamental reasons, I hope I conveyed that to you, they are there, baby. And the fact that we're still above, if we close the day, and I mean, I mean, it'd be, I, I can't imagine, but it can happen that somehow we're going to drop $35 an ounce in the spot price on gold or that silver is going to drop another dollar on top of what it's already down, 60 cents or so. The fact that we're holding where we are, it's just, it feels like 
a solid foundation is being laid right now for, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're getting through the worst of times. How's that sound, right? And we're doing it together, okay? All right, okay. Uh, let's go to the comments. I'm not going to leave until we get 17 more thumbs up. You guys want to hang out here? Because I want to ring that cowbell when we get to our 200 thumbs up. Um, let's go to the comments real quick. See what's going on. Thank you, Craig. Yeah, I hopefully I will feel better. I try not to think about it, but maybe once every two minutes that I'm not feeling good. Wealth, wealth, wealthy people are the majority buying gold. Thank you, Jake from Jake's Custom Parts. Um, I wrote a note down about Jake somewhere here. Where was it? Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. Jake and I were texting back and forth this morning, and that thought came to me. Um, I won't say that I'm happy about what's going on in the gold and silver market right now, um, but I'm not not happy and I'm not mad. I'm not. I, I feel good about where we are. Hopefully, you guys are feeling good about that as well. Uh, let's do this. Tap the like, yeah, guys. Come on, we're gonna hang out. We're hanging out. India would base a global currency on gold and silver and not unicorn fart dust. Yeah, you know that's the other. Big potential, it, it, maybe we need to start talking about this more, but we got the BRICS this year. I think I read yesterday, they've already had some meetings and it's in, in, in Russia is leading the BRICS this year. Uh, I think in October is when they have their big official meeting. It, you know, um, somehow gold and silver are going to be incorporated into this international trade that they are doing uh, amongst the BRICS nations. Okay, remember, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and then you can remember the new five by the acronym I-C-U, I-S-E-E-U. And that is Iran, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the United Arab Emirates. Think about those. That's just 10 names of countries. But think about combined what those 10 countries represent. It's massive, okay? We know just recently the United Arab Emirates and China did some ele electronic CBDC-oriented transfer outside of the dollar amongst themselves. But what's interesting to consider about these countries is, number one, the amount of gold they're buying, and silver for that matter. Um, oh, uh oh, another super chat. Hey, Jake. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> If you guys, I did it. In, I, uh, well, I'll get. I'm gonna remember that. Thank you, Jake. The um, uh, is is this fact that they don't trust each other either, right? They don't want the dollar, but there's also a certain level of distrust amongst themselves, and they're gonna trust gold, right? Gold will be the new, and I'm not making this up. I forget the lady's name, but she brought this up. You know, the last 50 years. Uh, the United States was the world hegemony, world power, right? The dollar was the reserve asset. Gold could become the world's reserve asset again, right? It's done it a few hundred times over the last thousands of years. Same thing with silver. So, um, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting scenario that's playing out. They're going to have meetings all year long. The world is changing and, and, and on that other big part of the world, it's becoming much more silver and gold centric. Now, Jake from Jake's Custom Parts, who's a big contributor to the channel, a moderator and a big contributor to the channel, gave me a super chat. Thank you, Jake. And before I forget, this channel is not made possible without the help of our moderators. Our moderators are great. So please type eight because the moderators are great. And that's a nice little way that you can show your appreciation like I just did for eights. Actually, there's five moderators. I'm horrible about, I always forget one name. So whatever name I forget, um, um, please forgive me. But we have, we have, um, <laughs> We have Sassy Silver, Annie Oakley, Jake from Jake's Custom Parts, Craig Edmonds, and there's one more I can't remember. I keep thinking of Ding Dongs when I think of him. Oh, yeah, Coin Shop Chris, our good friend. Thank you to all the moderators, everybody that's here. I'm telling you guys, if you want to make some friends, okay, I'm not, it, it really, it, it, the, there's some really 
good quality, smart people here. Get involved in these in the comment section, and uh, because you can meet some really nice people. And yes, that includes you, right? You're you're you know we get a couple bad eggs, no no doubt about it. But it it includes you, right? You're a good person. You're a smart person. Who doesn't like to make friends, right? We all love to make friends. I'm in and in and in honor of our friendships, my friendship with you. I'm going to ring the cowbell for two hundred thumbs up. Here's a little bonus feature, okay? If you want to enter the Valentine's Day giveaway, that's what, the 17th, which is what, 15 days from today, there's a link in the description of this video and all the videos, real simple, click on the link, it'll bring you to a short two minute video. All you have to do is leave a comment in the giveaway video, not this one, in the giveaway video, that says, thanks, Pimbex. And then on Valentine's Day, I will draw a random comment. I have a fancy computer program that draws a random comment and send you what could now be 25 ounces of silver. Let me show you the tray. All that could be yours. If I, if, oh, look, don't you love the way silver, look how it's all shining, huh? Uh, and thanks to our friends at Wendy's. <laughs> anyway, that's where the tray came from. Oh, I got to turn that fire off. Next week, next week, the silver and gold price will be on fire. You watch. Okay, I'll light, I'll light the light again when gold gets above $2,100. The flame, okay? Hey, it's a big deal you're here. Um you know, uh, life is wonderful, life is beautiful, life is difficult. The group of people here are awesome. This is not made possible without you. I'll say that one last time. It's a big honor for me when you join me in the basement, right? We're here for each other. You know, you can always send me an email. If you ever want to reach out to Coin Shop Chris or you want to reach out to anybody, uh, you know, I don't give out people's emails without their permission, but that will happen. Uh, did I not Did I not say thank you to Pimbex? Thank you, Pimbex. I thought I did already. Well, I had to say thank you to our two channel sponsors, Fortuna and Pimbex. Fortunasilver.com, Pimbex.com. At Pimbex.com, you can get the best prices you can get the best service, you can get the best selection, and and you can add to your stack. <laughs> you can get more metal for your money, right? I feel like I already said that. If I did, I apologize. Pimbex gets a double plug in this video. I'll see you guys soon. Have a great day. Thank you.